Mishkan, the meeting place of God and man. Exodus chapter 25 verses 1 to chapter 26, verses 1 to 30. Isaiah chapter 66 verses 1 to 13, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 12 to 20. When you and your friends were young, where was your favorite meeting place? Last week, God invited Moshe, Aaron and his sons and the elders to go up to the mountain to worship him, to affirm his covenant and to have fellowship with them. Then God made another set of invitations but this time it was only Moshe, because God gave him the tablets of stone, the Torah and mitzvah which God wrote that Moshe may teach the children of Israel. Our Torah portion deals with the making of tabernacle. In chapter 24, only Moshe, Aaron and his sons and the elders were invited, but this time God wants the children of Israel to get involved in bringing an offering for the sanctuary. Going back to Exodus chapter 12 verse 35, they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, gold, and clothing and these were the offerings that God wants for his sanctuary. The word sanctuary in Hebrew is mikdas which means, sacred place, holy place, and this possibly the reason why God wants gold, silver, bronze, different colors, fabrics, stones, and more. The sanctuary is part of the Mishkan that God wants the children of Israel to make so that His holy presence may dwell among them. Here, God is the architect, where in verse 9 says, according to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. The Hebrew word for tabernacle is Mishkan which means, dwelling place, and as He dwells among the Israelites, He instructed them to make the following, 1. The Ark of the Testimony, verses 10 to 22, made of acacia wood and overlaid with pure gold inside and out. These are the ten words and this is the most important part of the Mishkan, where the holy presence of God would dwell among the Israelites. This testimony is the agreement between God and His people. Remember how the Ark became important to Noah when the earth was flooded because of the wickedness of man, same as for the children of Israel the ark would remind them that God is not only faithful but also just. And notice there's a mercy seat which the Hebrew word is kaporet meaning place of atonement. The blood of the blameless animal would be sprinkled here once a year through Aaron for the sins of the people. This is a foreshadowing of Yeshua, for his blood not only atoned, covering, our sins but paid it fully, propitiation, hallelujah Baruch Hashem. Also there's two cherubim at the two ends of the mercy seat facing one another, and their faces were towards the mercy seat to remind Israel and us that our attention should be focused on what is inside the ark and that is the mitzvah, our agreement with God. 2. The table for the showbread, verses 23 to 30, this is also made of acacia wood and overlaid with pure gold. Since they're in the wilderness, this showbread reminds them of God's sustenance. In Leviticus chapter 24 verses 5 to 9, it says that Aaron and his sons shall eat the bread every Shabbat. In spite of the journey of the children of Israel in the wilderness where food is difficult to find, God provided bread. This bread also foreshadows Yeshua as the bread of life from heaven, John 6 35. 3. The menorah, verses 31 to 40. It is also made of pure gold and it stands in front of the table of showbread and it has seven branches, adorned with almond flowers. This menorah gives light inside the Mishkan and for Aaron and his sons to serve God. Menorah is also a foreshadowing of Yeshua as, first, the light of the world, John 8 12. Second, the true vine, John 15, 1 5. And apart from him we can't bear much fruit. Now, Regarding the almond blossoms on it, the Hebrew word for almond is sakad. Of all the trees, it is first to arouse and awake from the sleep of winter so it is a reminder to the Israelites and us that we should always prompt in serving God. 4. The Mishkan chapter 26 verses 1 to 30, going back to the dream of Yaakov at Bethel in Genesis chapter 28 verse 13 to 15 that says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, you shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, 
I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. For God to fulfill this, he did many things and one of those is the building of the Mishkan that he may dwell among them, Exodus 25, 8. The Mishkan has three sections, the courtyard, the holy place and the holy of holies. The Mishkan was made of valuable materials showing us that God is king, majestic, detailed and organized. Now what can we learn from the Mishkan? 1. God is humble, he came from his throne. Though he was rich, he became poor, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, and he made himself of no reputation by taking the form of a bondservant, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, Philippians 2, 7 and 8. The king of heaven went down to earth, born in a sukkah and declared himself as the son of man, Matthew 8, 20. 2. God is approachable, when he invited Moshe, Aaron and his sons and the seventy elders to come up to the mountain, Exodus 24, 1, it means he is approachable. Even Yeshua when he said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 28, it means he is approachable. It's nice to know that we have a God who can be approached at any time. Ephesians 3 12, NLT. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. 3. It all points to Yeshua, from the entrance to the mercy seat it's Yeshua. There is only one entrance in the courtyard of the Mishkan. Same as Yeshua, he is the only way to Adonai Yod He Vav He, John 14, 6. The altar of the burnt offering where the animal sacrifice burned and the bronze basin where the priests washed his hands before entering the holy place in the courtyard, it's Yeshua for he offered himself once for all, Hebrews 7.27, and he washes our sins, Hebrews 9.22. Inside the holy place, he is the menorah because he is the light of the world, John 8.12. In front of the menorah is the table of showbread and Yeshua is the bread from heaven, John 6.31-33. The altar of incense which can be seen before entering the most holy place was a picture of Yeshua as our intercessor to Adonai Yod He Vav He, Hebrews 7.25. And finally, the Ark of the Covenant and Mercy Seat also foreshadows Yeshua. For the high priest enters the most holy place every year during Yom Kippur with the blood of the innocent animal, Yeshua offered himself once to bear the sins of many. Hebrews 9.27. Our Haftarah deals with the final chapter of the book of Isaiah and its conclusion. For God is not after the Mishkan that is made of stone. He is looking for someone who is poor in spirit and repentant. In Matthew 5, 3 Yeshua said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Here, God is not after the offerings and sacrifices as if it's just only a routine. He wants to dwell in someone's heart who is willing to obey his words. 1 Samuel 15 22 says, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. That's why in Jeremiah 31, 33 God said through prophet Jeremiah, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my Torah in their minds, and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Torah written on the heart means a heart that is willing to obey the words of God. Ezekiel 35, 25-27, New King James Version. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean, I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. In apostolic portion, Paul urged the believers in Corinth to glorify God through their bodies. How? By reminding them of the following. 1. First. The body of a believer is no longer for sin but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Verse 13. 2. Second, the body is a member of Yeshua. Verse 15. In Romans 12. 4 and 5 Paul said, 
For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. 3. The body is the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh. Verse 19. In Romans 12. 1 Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Paul ended chapter 6 by reminding not only the believers in Corinth, but even us that we were bought at a price so we should glorify God in our bodies. 1 Peter 1 18 and 19. New King James Version, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The connection of our Parasha 63 is about God's dwelling among men. In the Torah, God instructed Moshe and Israel to make a sanctuary that he may dwell among them. In Haftarah, God is looking for a poor and repentant heart who trembles at his word so he could dwell. In Apostolic, Paul reminded the believers in Corinth that their bodies are God's temple to dwell with. We all have our favorite places where we meet our loved ones or friends since we were young or even until now. But for God, He only wants to dwell in us through His Son Yeshua, the Mishkan and the Torah who became flesh and dwelt among us. Isaiah 7:14, New King James Version, Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call His name Emmanuel, God with us. John 1.14, New King James Version, And the Word, Torah, became flesh and dwelt, tabernacled, among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Shabbat Shalom.